We got an email from Deva Krishna Prabhu, and in and that's from he's from where? It is not mentioned, oh, okay. unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So in his email, he he's writing put, and putting the question: Dandavas Maharaj, what's the difference between fantasy and sahajiism, and would delusional state fall in the same category? First, we must recognize that we are in a delusional state, all of us. That's our default position. Um, Bhayam dhiti abhini beshita shad id shad apeya shiviparya yosmriti mentioned in the Bhagavatam that the reason we're overcome by fear, anxiety, and the dualities of material existence is account, on account of our uh, forgetfulness of our relationship with Krishna. Remember, and Sanatan Shiksha, Mahaprabhu's instructions to Sanatan Goswami, interestingly, it begins of course, we take it that Sanatana Goswami is representing our position. We don't impose that upon him, but he says, Ke ami kene amoy jari tapetroi iha nahi jani, nahi dani, like I don't know, ke mone hi to hoi. He says, you know, ke ami, who am I and why am I suffering from the threefold miseries of material existence? Like this is the starting point. Right? And what are those threefold miseries that he's alluding to? Adhyatmic, adibotic, adidevic. Self imposed miseries, then adibotic, which in a sense we're experiencing now worldwide from other living beings, other living entities. Uh, and he's saying, why am I suffering from these things? It's uh, certain, it's established that we're, we're in a suffering condition. And he's saying, who am I and why is it that I'm forced to undergo these different types of miseries? The third being uh, uh, Adi Devik, um, you know, um, which I find interestingly, we're always referred to in uh, insurance policies as acts of God. Deva, I mean, you know, the divine or the devata's nature, but also acts of God. It would say in fine print in the insurance policy, this policy does not cover acts of God, <laughs> you know, things that are just, you know, natural disasters. But still, it's interesting that this is the starting point for Sanatan Goswami Prabhu. That very, who am I? And why is this I, who I am, uh, undergoing these varieties of suffering condition? But as interesting as that question is, I find Mahaprabhu's answer uh, so beautiful and delightful. And the, the, what is the first, because it, remember it starts with who am I before we get to why you're suffering the threefold uh, miserable conditions. So to the answer, who am I, he says, Jive Swarupai Krishnera Nitya Das. And he's saying, the Swarup of the Jiva, who you really are, because Swarup means you're own original divine form, self position. He's saying, who you are, Jive Swaropoi Krishna Nityadas, you're the eternal servant of Krishna. That's who you are, and that's your position. And you have a divine form uh, that is the personification, the devotional, the personification of those devotional tendencies 
and loving expressions, of your loving devotion, there's a form that is you that embodies that, personifies that, is the uh, form, expression of your um, devotional heart. Uh, I've mentioned on the uh, contrary that the body in which we are embodied at present is the biological expression of the soul's delusion. Because right? we're talking about delusion. This body is the biological expression of the soul's delusion. So, and this is our default position. Once Srila Guru Maharaj was giving a talk and one devotee was moved by what he was saying, but then he was sort of shaking his head and he said, Oh Maharaj, I'm just feeling some, um, you know, empathy, sadness, he said, about um, the, what was the word he used? He didn't say sincere souls, but he said, oh, innocent. I'm just feeling so sad about the innocent people, like who maybe don't know these things or, you know, uh, with that in mind. Like we're privileged and I'm feeling some sadness uh, for those, those innocent souls. And practically before he finished, Gurumar said, there are no innocent souls. <laughs> you know? And then he said very, and he wasn't being cruel or insensitive or mean. He was just um, stating the position. And then he said very, uh, uh, with feeling, a very moving way, he said, we have all betrayed our Lord, like that. We have all betrayed our Lord. Nicha dvesha samutvena dvandva mohena bharata alluded to in the Bhagavad Gita. So understand that first. So, and Guru Maharaj also gave another interesting example because about how we're going to navigate the world of delusion. And, and that's something we should consider. And all the circumstances we find ourselves in and all the things we could consider favorable, unfavorable, desirable, undesirable, real. What's real in the world of delusion? You even have cognitive scientists uh, raising these questions. You know, uh, uh, Donald Hoffman and his uh, desktop metaphor. Yeah. Uh, but that's a, a, a subject for another time. But so, so Charitamritam saying, Dweta, Dweta, Abhadra, Dweta, Abhadra, Abhadra, Dwete abhadra bhadra, sub manodharm, e balo e mando e sub brahm. It says, so in this world, thinking what is auspicious, what is inauspicious, what's good, what e balo means, you know, this is good, e mando, that's bad. It says, the first part says, sub manodharm. It's all, uh, you can say, a mental projection, all of it. In this sense, sometimes Guru Maharaj would remind us, the whole world is a hoax. It's based on a hoax. That doesn't mean this table is, you know, they say, oh, so this isn't real. When he would talk about uh, Bishop Barclay and uh, his, um, what, what was his philosophy called? Um, I forget, ideal, idealism or something. But Guru Maharaj, Barclay said, the world is in the mind, right? this aphorism. So it's easily parodied. Someone can say, oh, I see. So this table, this glass of water, 
It's just in my mind. <clears throat> That's not what he's saying as I take a uh, sip of this water. What he's saying is the objective world is floating in consciousness. Yes, there's a table here. It's, it's hard. It has dimensions, height, length, breadth, width, weight, color. But these are all subjective concepts. And a cluster of subjective con concepts forms an object. So he's saying, yes, this whole world that is uh, manifest for some time is, as now in Guru Maharaj's world, the whole objective world is like an iceberg floating in an ocean of consciousness. Right. So saying, so Charitamri is saying, sub uh, uh, floating in the uh, mental world. Then it says, so saying, this is a balo a manda, a sub brahm, mean, the brahm means a mistake. It's a mistake to start differentiating in this plane. So, and oh, the example I was going to mention about Guru Maharaj. So now if we go towards the spiritual part of the question about fantasy and Sahajiism. So Guru Maharaj says, say you want to go um, to Calcutta. Uh, <laughs> uh, he said, but you're, you go in the opposite direction. Right? He said, so one thing you'll have to do, if you're fortunate, is retrace your steps to get going in the right direction. He said, but the greater problem is that what you've conceived of as Calcutta in your mind is not Calcutta. So on, uh, you've got the wrong idea about what it is, and you're pursuing that, and it's actually taking you away from the substantial thing that you're trying to achieve. So when it comes to spiritual realization, and more specifically, the cultivation of Krishna consciousness, what is that Krishna consciousness that we're pursuing, or alluded to here, uh, having a, a fantasy about, or uh, trying to achieve through uh, imitation. Right? Ha have we properly conceived Krishna consciousness? Right? Now, only Krishna can reveal himself. Right? Like the Upanishads saying, Nāyamātmā pravacanena labhyo namedaya nā bahunā sutena tāme varsha vinute tena labhyas means he reveals himself to whom he chooses, through whom he chooses. The through whom part we conceive of Saru Shastra Guru and Vaishnav. <clears throat> and in one place we're told, <clears throat> for example, in Kali Yuga, there's just Vaishnava Shastras and Vaishnavas. But I like to say, this is another way of saying there's only one thing, Vaishnavas. Because without them, there won't be Vaishnava Shastras. Without them, you won't be able to recognize what is a valid Vaishnava Shastra. And without them, you won't have a proper interpretation of what the Vaishnava Shastra is revealing. So this puts the, the maximum amount of emphasis on the importance of the Vaishnava who subsequently may be seen as guru, etc. But the Vaishnava is critical in this position. So when you say Krishna reveals himself to whom, through whom he chooses, his favorite, uh, favored uh, method of revelation is through his devotee, his divine agent. And how, uh, how much so? So much so that, you know, Guru Rupa Harim Gaurim, Radha Ruchi Ruchavratam, 
that when he himself takes the position of guru, it's a, uh, from the uh, perspective of a devotee. When he comes as Mahaprabhu, the Guru Rupa of Krishna is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and who is Mahaprabhu? Who's enveloped in the heart of not only a devotee, but the supreme devotee. When he wants to distribute Krishna consciousness, proper and Krishna consciousness to it and its highest um, quality, it's from her position. So, and in many places, uh, this is given consistently, uh, you know, uh, 11th Canto of Bhagavatam, Bhaktyaham Ekaya Grahyam. Krishna is saying, the only way you can get me is through devotion. And we go, oh, well, then I want to uh, get devotion. Well, then how will you get devotion? Back, keep reading the 11th canto. Bhaktya sanjataya bhaktya. And he would say, and only devotion can give devotion or ignite or give birth to, awaken, whichever word you want to use. He's saying only devotion can awaken that in another. Give birth to that, awaken that, arouse, whichever word you want to use. So again, then we come again to the position of the devotee, right? which Guru Mahar says is the dynamo, or you, want, you can say the dynamic, the dynamic, the dynamo that is infusing all spiritual activities and making them meaningful and substantial. So, um, and we could say generously that in the uh, childlike stage that you could tolerate the fantasy, the imitation, as we do in children. We see they, they, they play in this world and they put on some particular clothing or whatever, uh, sometimes their parents, uh, and they're pretending to be uh, adults or doctors or astronauts or soldiers or uh, whatever it uh, might be, or rock stars, or, and, and it's all, in, in the case of a child, we, it makes us smile. We think, oh. Or they imitate the behavior of adults. Guru, <laughs> Guru Maharaj, again, he gave an example I guess even in his time, he said, there was one case of a monkey impersonating a doctor. <laughs> and we've seen that, you know, the monkey with the stethoscope and the white coat and the whatever you call that thing, the light on the head, and uh, imitating a doctor examining a patient. And it gives us some comedic relief. Uh, but no one would consider that as a uh, uh, possibility for uh, you know, medical examination or treatment that would be insane. So we could say in parallel, in the, the, when someone is newly recruited to Krishna consciousness, uh, they may have some fantasy about being a great devotee sometime, or they may see the external behavior uh, of those who might be considered advanced and think, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll mimic that, and that'll be beneficial for me. Um, wh when I join, uh, devotees like to imitate talking like Prabhupada imitating his speech, his vocabulary, his gestures. It was a thing. Right? <laughs> um, but if someone wants to pursue these things seriously, that's another thing. Right? E even that child who might have had some 
um, uh, might have envisioned themselves in some position in the future. The, uh, ironically, the, the, uh, the, the way they may get there is by paying attention to being a child, doing those things and then gradually moving in a particular direction where the, another stage of their life, this may become a realistic possibility, but they may be better at present just being a child and uh, forgetting uh, or, or not overindulging in these fantasies. So again, and, and uh, one newly recruited to Krishna consciousness, we can say, could be forgiven for uh, this fantasizing in this way or some level of imitative behavior. But if someone is going to pursue Krishna consciousness seriously under the guidance of a substantial guru and Vaishnava, then fantasy and imitation will, will have to be left away. The and this is not only true in Krishna consciousness, but in everything. We, we see the, the little girls who think, oh, I want to be a gymnast, or the ice skaters, like they have in Russia. <clears throat> uh, we see it's possible, but if you look at the story, they show the little girls who are trying out, and then the ones who seem to have some um, potential or some specific talent, they go under the guidance of a coach, and then what happens? They begin uh, a life of intense discipline. Sometimes they can't take it. Right? The girl who just won the gold medal in the Winter Olympics from Izhevsk, she was ready to quit. And the teacher, the coach, told her, I don't need you. You need me to realize your potential. I actually don't need you. I can uh, pick another student and train them. So you think about it, what you want to do. And the girl wisely decided, all right, I'll tough it out. I'm going to continue on under your guidance. She's the one who won the gold medal. But my point here is that how much uh, the little girl fantasies of the outfits and someday wearing the crown or winning, that had to be set aside. In her case, it, it was realized. But as when she had to give up the fantasizing and the imitation and then begin the hard work of, the, of disciplining herself and following a regimen. As we see, all, all across the boards and all, all the elite sports, it's interesting to note in parallel that the pursuit of perfection dictates diet, when they go to bed at night, when they wake up in the morning. It dictates how much social life you will have, usually none or very little. So that's because sometimes we think uh, on the spiritual side, it, uh, peer, people will make this argument as like sensory deprivation, but uh, I, I don't think they've cl taken a close look at the Krishna consciousness movement. <laughs> but in parallel, you could make the same accusations toward these pursuits of perfection uh, that we see in athletics. Right? But what it means is, those, they're so serious and so driven, they're willing to regulate their lives according to that, with that one thing in mind. Right? And we also notice, again, a parallel to like ashram life, that uh, none of them do it alone. That's also interesting. Even the best, they don't train alone. Right? It's always a group. Why? Because um, various reasons. Some of them are that maybe some days you don't feel like uh, getting up uh, early in the morning and, and going out and training. But 
maybe one of your friends does, and on the uh, basis of your association with them, they sort of carry you through that period, right? the camaraderie. So there's a coach. But what are the things that you find in com common with this pursuit that everything else becomes secondary to this singular pursuit of perfection, right? of which it's unlikely that you'll achieve it. Also, that doesn't dissuade anyone. They go, you know, there's only one gold medal, and how many people are competing for that? They will say, even if I don't get it, it's worth it. It's worth all of this, even if I don't achieve the highest position. So what do we take away from this? Dedication. And what do we see that's consistent? Uh, uh, this extreme level of discipline and dedication and pursuit of the goal under the guidance of a qualified coach and in association with others who are, have the same pursuit. Welcome to the ashram. <laughs> That's what we're doing. We're in pursuit of the ultimate perfection. And somebody would say, oh, didn't you hear the sloka that said, uh, muktanam api siddhanam narayanam, how rare it is. Yes, we heard that and we got inspired by that. Yes, you mean that we are being given the opportunity to aspire for that thing, maybe one in 10 million get? Yes, sign me up for that. That's the thing I want to pursue. I don't want to pursue the thing that everybody gets easily without any endeavor or any self-sacrifice or any discipline. Let's try for that thing. As Gurumars like to say, according to Upanishads, you know, yasmin vigyate sarvam eva vigyatam bhavati. Uh, you know, yes, men uh, love dumb bhavati. You know, try for that one thing upon gaining which everything is God. Try to know that one thing upon knowing which everything is known. So I like to call it the unified field theory, the Brahma, Paramatma, Bhagawan. So, uh, anyway, that uh, noble pursuit. The, they're outside of the field of athletics and, say, in um, uh, medical research. They're people who have dedicated the better part of their adult lives to finding a cure for cancer. The, this was the driving force for their going to medical school, becoming doctors, researchers, etc. And to this day, they don't have a cure for cancer. But if you, and those people might wake up in the middle of the night and jot something down that they're exploring. And if you told them, well, in as much as you've not found a cure for cancer, would you consider your going to, you know, college, medical school, all this research, you know, just a waste of time and energy, and it would have been better spent doing something else? They will vehemently def no, no. This pursuit, is, it is so noble in its service to the suffering humanity that whatever sacrifices we had to make are worth it. And we still don't have that. It's a fact. But we wouldn't have it any other way, and we're still trying for that. And maybe we'll leave this world without having not achieved that, but we won't consider that our lives were a waste of time or all the sacrifices that we made because it's so high, it's such a noble pursuit and so potentially beneficial for everyone. So, and they can say that legitimately about, and, and we would have to take that seriously and show some respect for that. But then, so then, uh, in the case of Krishna consciousness, talking about the, the noblest, highest pursuit, which is beneficial not only for the, those who are in pursuit, but for everyone. Yata taror mulani shechenena tripyanti tatskanda bujo pashaka 
prano paharat chayatendriyanam sarvahanam achuteja. <clears throat> How is it beneficial for everyone? You're saying you, you, you put all your energy in this one thing and it, it benefits everyone. Uh, any example you can give? You know, Kaviraj Goswami saying, yes, like when you pour water on the root of a tree, it goes through the trunk, through all the branches, the twigs, the leaves. It's by putting all your energy in one place, everything is served simultaneously. You say, well then that would have to be the, the, you know, the root cause of all existence, or the source of all existence. Bijamam sarvabhutanam. Krishna says in the Bhagavatam, uh, Bhagavad Gita. I'm the seed giving father of all existences. So he's saying, so by serving him, Krishna, by putting all your energy in this, the pursuit of Krishna consciousness, then everyone will be served. Um, but Again, under whose guidance? Who will be that coach? Who is that guru? Who is that Vaishnav? And what do they have? Um, <clears throat> Srila Rupa Goswami cautions us in uh, his Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is really the book of devotion. Srila Prabhupada <clears throat> settled upon nectar of devotion for his summary study, but I've seen the manuscripts of the original, and it was originally, interestingly, it was called the science of devotion. That's how he called it. We know it's Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is so beautiful it can hardly uh, be translated. Uh, but so the science of devotion. And there, He's telling us two things to be aware of. Not only, but specifically in this regard of uh, fantasy and imitationism. Uh, he says, the, um, those who are sentimental by nature, like who cry easily over anything and everything, they will also cry over Krishna consciousness. He's telling us, do not mistake these tears as the tears of Prem, or pure love of Krishna, or pure devotion. They're sentimental by nature. They cry about this. They will also cry about Krishna consciousness. That is not, you know, pulakasru sharira that we hear of in the songs of Naratam Thakur, that, that means, you know, hair standing on end, tears pouring from the eyes. Saying, no, it is mundane sentiment. And the other is acting or imitation. And I like to reference our beloved Stanislavski, <laughs> who created what modern actors sometimes refer to as the method. And um, to, I mean, put it in, in, in a nutshell, he's saying that <clears throat> there is a method, an imitative method, by which you can um, achieve a stage where you will feel that you have transitioned into that character right? by imitating their dress, their gestures, um, mood, mentality, learning so many things about the character and uh, through this sort of um, intense, um, um, explicit imitation, you will feel that you have become that character. Not that, you're, that you've actually become that character and then you can uh, uh, how do you say, interact with other actors, right? So that's very good for acting, but you'll say that you may feel that you've achieved that, but you're still who you are. It's an act, 
It's imitation. There's an old um, saying in Hollywood that, that came from a wit. He said, their impressions, when they'd asked, what are your impressions? He said some things about Hollywood that we can't express right now. Uh, and with regard to uh, the sincerity there is there. And, but he said, uh, and the, uh, a second thing about sincerity, he said, when you can fake sincerity, then everything else is easy. <laughs> and that's cruel, but it, it's, it's humorous and insightful. He's saying, when you can fake sincerity, then the rest is easy. Right? So Rupa Goswami is advising us, basically telling us, there are those who can fake the real thing, but it's not the real thing. It's uh, um, a mockery. In the Chaitanya Bhagavat, we see in one place that um, Haridas Thakur, there's a group of people assembled, and we've seen similar things in India where someone's like playing a flute, and they have these cobras who are going like, you know, and all the people are uh, fascinated. And, uh. But when Haridas Thakur sees this, he sees the cobras moving like this, it reminds him of Ananta Shesh and he enters a divine trance. So the external thing brings about internal divine remembrance. And in that state, in connection with Ananta Dev, he's um, fainted to this world. And we, we remind everyone when we hear that such great devotees, they've fainted uh, to this plane, it doesn't mean that they're unconscious. They're actually so deeply penetrated into the upper world, the inner world, that they're unable to maintain uh, body consciousness here. Right. So witnessing this, all the people they realize they're in the presence of this Siddha Mahatma, great devotee. So they're taking feet, dust, and Haridas trying to escape that, but sort of caught by them. So they're showing so much honor and taking the dust from his holy, and uh, you know, Abhishek for themselves. But we're told there's one envious Brahmin observing this. And he's saying like, well, I could do that. Because he thinks it's a show. He's saying, and I, I could probably even, you know, put on a better show. So then he imitates Haridas Thakur. And the result is the people beat him. And when he's, been, he's saying like, what, what? I mean, when he did it, you're taking feet dust and, and I do the same thing and you're beating me. They're saying, yeah, because you're a phony. Right? And what you're doing, it's not only um, unreal, uh, but it's a mockery. You're mocking the actual exalted pure devotees of the Lord by trying to imitate their behavior. Right? So it, it's, and we could add to that. Let's discuss this, you know, uh, currency, right? So you have a hundred dollar bill, right? Now say there's someone who can, with Photoshop or other means, make something that really looks like a hundred dollar bill and for some unsuspecting folks, passes these counterfeit bills. They've, they've been deceived into accepting it, right? So not only is that 
unreal. It's counterfeit. There's no uh, value there. There's no substance there. Uh, it's also criminal. Right? It's illegal. And this goes for those who distribute counterfeit spiritual substance that may appear to pass for the genuine thing. Right? We mentioned recently when Babaji Maharaj was forced to sit through uh, the reading of the Bhagavatam by a professional reciter. And at the end, uh, he uh, asked the devotees to get some cow dung and cow urine to cleanse that area. And they were all surprised at him. But Babaji Maharaj, we, we just heard the Bhagavatam. And he said, you heard Bhagavatam? All I heard was money, money, money. So literally, he was vibrating the Sanskrit verses of the Bhagavatam. But because his ulterior motive was to make the higher thing, to bring that down and, and into the objective world uh, as uh, to serve his lower interest, it had no uh, genuine spiritual quality to it. Right? And in that sense, was something mundane. And this is a little harder for people to grasp. But for example, Guru Maharaj would say, quoting Jagadananda Pandit, Namakar Bahiroi Bhattanamu Kabunoi. He's saying, Nam Akar, the syllables of the holy name. He doesn't say, are not the holy name. When he says Kabunoi, it means, are never, that's not it. It's not just literally those sounds being vibrated. Right? But what is it? Rupa Goswami, Atak Sri Krishna Nama Di, Nabhavyed Grahyam Indriye, Sevan Mukhe Hijjavaro Shayameva Sportida. The Sri Krishna Nama, Nama Di means the Nam of Krishna, his holy name. And that also means spiritual sound, the sound representation. Not only the name, but uh, Shabda Brahma, Shruti, uh, Rupa. For we hear from Bhaktivinoda Thakur, really the roop of Krishna comes out of the sound. So Saraswati Thakur advised not to take the name of Krishna in front of a picture of Krishna which we've all done at one time or another or thought was a good idea. He, Saraswati Tagore said, no. He said, Your sen he said, the senses are like vultures and they will convert the form of Christ and the vulture food into something uh, objective. So not like that, but from the sound, the roop, then guna, particular quality, and lila. So it means the, the, the uh, vocal experience, uh, an auditory experience, the uh, eye experience, then mind and deeper, right? And the soul, lila. So there's that word again, grahyam. Remember, bhaktyaham ekaya grahyam means to grasp, to achieve, to obtain. Atak Sri Krishna Namadi Nabhavyed Grahyam Indriye. The Indriyas means senses, and that includes the mind. It's saying the name, form, qualities, pastimes of Krishna are beyond the grasp of the mind and senses. So then what is that fantasy about? It's mental substance. But what is being imitated? Remember, Gurmar is saying, like, you're, you, th you're, uh, you wanted to go to Calcutta, you're going in the wrong direction. And he said, but what's worse than that is you didn't properly conceive Calcutta to begin with. So we have not proper to uh, transfer this. We've not properly conceived what is Krishna consciousness. 
because it's not an objective experience. It's not what amuses us. It's not made out of mental or intellectual substance. It's not a mental or intellectual uh, projection. Or in Srila Prabhupada's words, we listen when we're newly entered in Krishna consciousness, we'd hear this album of Prabhupada over and over and over again, where he would sing Hare Krishna Ma mantra on one side and explain it on the other side. And <laughs> there were some devotees who'd memorized the entire thing. They'd heard it that many times. But I remember parts and I remember Prabhupada saying, it is not an artificial imposition on the mind. And interestingly, he also said, like the genuine cry of a child for its mother. And I realized, oh, that means there's the false cry, the phony cry. Sometimes the people say, to them, take your, your child is, a, he's okay. It's all right. The other people are saying, no, you're, and why? Because the mother knows the difference between when he really needs her and really, and when he's just whining or faking it. So I like when Prabhupada said, it is like the genuine cry of a child for its mother. Meaning there must be a non-genuine cry, something that resembles the cry in imitation. So, um, oh, I'm saying, not an artificial imposition of the mind. So, beyond the grasp uh, of my, uh, the mind and senses, then you think, then, then what are we doing? Or when you hear, you know, you should remember Krishna or think about manmana bhava mad bhakto, uh, become my devotee, think about me. Didn't Mahaprabhu tell Das Goswami to think of, you know, Radha and Krishna in your heart? By the way, Guru Raj will say that means in the Siddha plane. But, so, to, how to properly conceive? Now we come back to the Vaishnava. Sevan mukhe hijavaro shayameva spurtida. But Rupa Goswami is saying, but when there's seva, if it's seva, and Guru Maharaj will point out, seva is how you connect with what is higher than you, through submission and offering yourself in, to serve, uh, to, in service to that which is higher. The opposite of that is when we take something lower as to acquire, control, and consume as a means of fulfillment. And now we're back to the, uh, the, the delusional world. We were seduced by the satanic mania that there, you know, from Maya, that there was this world that we could acquire, control, and consume, and establish ourselves uh, as exploiting agents, and then try and expand the circumference of our exploiting capacity. I am Ozymandias. Look upon my kingdom, ye mighty, in despair. And what do they say? All you could see is desert sand, no kingdom, vanished long ago. So, save on Mukej, the serving, what, what takes it from anukar to anusar? Anukar means imitation, anusar means following. Right? Seva sadaka rupena, siddha rupena, chatrahi, braja loka anusarata, to follow their example, not to imitate, but to follow what they did. What is it about? Atma samarpanam, self-giving, self-sacrifice. When um, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur concludes the Kalyana Kalpataru, beautifully, humbly saying, you know, uh, uh, you know thus, um, uh, how does he say, you know, uh, he's signing his name in the end, he says, the, the, um, uh, sweeper and the Namhata of Nityananda. Like, so in the Namhata, that's a divine place to begin with, but he's saying, uh, the, the, the lowly sweeper and the Namhata of Nityananda Prabhu, Kedarnath, you know, so beautiful. But along the lines of Trinadapi Sunichena, humbler than a blade of grass, 
taking of late of the Inastravati Narati, what does Saraswati Thakur say? If Bhaktivinoda Thakur says he's a, uh, you know, an insignificant sweeper in the Namhata, the marketplace of the holy name of Nityananda Prabhu, then, then consider me as one of the straws in his broom. Then Srila Guru Maharaj says, if we take this to be a sincere statement, not just something clever, um, uh, but it's from his heart and, and it's, it's a heartfelt expression of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. And then Guru Maharaj said this, he said, then you can understand the unit of construction of the Swaroop Jive Swarupai Krishnaro Nityadas. O oh, Sanatan, you are the eternal servant of Krishna. But as this body is the biological expression of the soul's exploiting tendencies, that Swarup is the form, representation, personification of your devotional tendencies, of self giving and self sacrifice. So Rupa Goswami is saying, when you're tongue, when, when, well, let's put it this way, when your heart is infused with seva, which means submission and service to the higher, offering oneself as a, um, uh, a medium right, uh, to, to, to become a receptacle of divine current, then just like the apparatus we see before, these lights, right? Um, you could show one of the lights. <laughs> uh, um, that what is giving the illumination is the current that's passing through the apparatus. That's why namakar bahi roy bhattanamu kabunoi. It's not the apparatus that gives the light. It, and and on this, uh, <clears throat> with regard to imitation, so you see, looks exactly the same. Is not only looks is exactly the same, but without the current, there's no illumination. That's what he's telling us. It's not that uh, it's said a particular way or has a particular uh, s external sound to it, but uh, same aspect objectively, what makes it the difference between material and spiritual is the current that's passing through it. Sevan Mukhe Hijavaro. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in the Sharanagati that the holy name, when the holy, as you've heard, from a substantial Vaishnava enters your heart, that means the deep heart's core of consciousness, he said, then the heart is moving the tongue to vibrate the name of Krishna. The heart is, uh, the eyes are now having a, a visual experience. It's all coming from heart. The seva current in the heart is giving illumination to the, all, all the senses with regard to Krishna conception. Then we'll say, oh, then how do I get that? Bhaktya sanjataya bhaktya. Through connection, as Guru said, the dynamo, the dynamic force of, uh, of the seva current is descended, personified, and extended through his devotee. Asraya loya bhaje tari krishna nahi taje akar marane again. Narutam Thakur saying, don't try to go to Krishna directly. Asraya loya bhaje, take shelter of the devotee of Krishna. Krishna can never give up his devotees. So if you get their connection, then automatically you get Krishna and substantial Krishna. The sort of devotion that is in the Braja Loka Anusarata, by following that devotee, the sort of devotion that is in their heart is transferred to the heart 
of a, a sincere, faithful servitor. Otherwise, Guru said, in, in terms of imitation and fantasy, you can, he said, you could do this for lifetimes and not get anything substantial. But what are we told? Saru Sangha, Saru Sangha, Sarva Shastra Koi, Lava Matra, Saru Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hor. A moment's association with a genuine Krishna loving devotee can give you everything. Sarva Siddhi Hoi means gives you all perfection, everything. And, and what does that mean really? Service. You want to, the, the uh, proof of appreciation is offering oneself in service, not just uh, um, uh, physical proximity, that type of association, but the, the, the gratitude uh, is properly expressed in atma samarpanam, offering oneself in service. And we're told of the three types of devotees, third class, second class, first class, with regard to the holy name, third class, they've taken the name of Krishna, but in connection with someone real, substantial. Madhyam, a second position, they're initiated, uh, constantly taking the name of Krishna. But it's interesting, when we get to the third cl first class, we think, well, they must be then. I mean, if the other one's doing it all the time, then what would they? And, and what is it? Suddenly there's an inversion, and they say, in connection with the Mahabhagavata, the holy name of Krishna descends within you. I had that experience. The first, when I got this opportunity to serve Srila Prabhupada, you know, it's when I went in the room and I paid my dandavats, I looked up, I was filled with Krishna Nam by his divine grace. And I went, oh, this is that in connection with, he's not doing anything, uh, ostensibly, but coming in connection with him, I'm suddenly full of Krishna Nam. Then what shall be your response to that? To offer yourself in service. To not like run off and think, how, how fortunate I am, look at me, look what I've got in my pocket. Then vanish, but the appropriate response, expression of gratitude, to offer oneself in service as a medium, as an agent, as a reciprocal for what is wanted to be given. So it's all dependent on the higher, not, we can say God helps those who help themselves. You have to show up and give yourself, but what, it's all up to Krishna what will come to us. Uh, not a, a mental fantasy, an intellectually chalked out path of imitation, which really is to deceive others. You know, the famous song of Srila Saraswati Thakur, Vaishnava K, who is a Vaishnava? What does the line say? Um, um, Pratishtara tare nirjanera gore tava harinam kevala koitava. It's uh, beautifully brutal. And you saying, what is this harinam? You're supposedly going into seclusion, taking the holy name. Pratishtara tare. And at one point he says, sukhara, uh, yeah, sukhara vishta. Oh yeah, Kam, uh, kanaka kami pratishta sukhara vishta. I don't even know if I can translate us, anything, but this pratishta that you seek, the name and fake of fame of being known as a devotee of Krishna, someone advanced, he's saying sukhara vishta means, you know, the dung of a pig. But you can imagine it could be said in a more terse way. That's what he's, he's saying, that's what, the Tava Harinam Kevala, this Harinam you're doing is meant to deceive others. Don't you know that Pratistas know better than that? Right. From the same person who penned what? The Prakrita Rasa Shatadushini. As Madhva Charja made the Mayavad Shatadushini, 
100 flaws of Mayavadis. Saraswati Tagore made 100 flaws of Prakrita Sahajyas. And as Guru Maharaj pointed out, he said, there are innumerable flaws. He's pointing out 100 of them. Right? And it's all about, interesting, the qualifiers there, Prakrita Sahajya. Sahajya, Sahaj, in and of itself, is a wonderful thing. It means, what, what is innate? Jive Swarupai Krishna, that is your eternal position. It's your birthright. Krishna Bhakti, Krishna Prem. Prakrita Sahaja means a mundane uh, representation of that, which has become equated with Sahajism, which is synonymous with imitationism. Right. When uh, Babaji Maharaj, Gorkhishwarnas Babaji Maharaj, some man was very taken by him to the point of wanting to imitate him. Because he's seeing Babaji Maharaj living in a hut on the bank of the Ganga or under a boat or this. And sometimes he's taking Harinam and sometimes uh, waves of ecstatic emotions or inundating his divine form. He's crying out. So this man builds a hut on the bank of the Ganga. And he enters there and he's you know, counting beads, you know, three lakhs of Krishna Nam, 192 rounds. Uh, and, and then he's sometimes wailing and crying. You know. And someone of those who had the good fortune to visit Babaji Maharaj, they said, Babaji Maharaj, have you heard about uh, the Baba, <laughs> you know, down by the ghat, you know. <laughs> and I like, Srila Prabhupada said about Gorka Shore Das Babaji Maharaj, is after telling a few stories and something, he said, Gorka Shore Das Babaji Maharaj was a very humorous fellow. <laughs> so he'd make these witty, cryptic remarks. So when they asked him, are you aware of that person? Babaji Maharaj said, if a woman enters the labor room, like another, where you give birth to me, and she starts moaning and groaning and contorting in different ways. Does she produce a child? And in the words of Guru Maharaj, on witty understatement, he said, many things must have happened before that. <laughs> So he's just saying, you, it, think of that. So it's like, in other words, e even in this example, there has to be, to follow it, and hopefully not to take the conceit too far, but there has to be conception from a potent source, and then growth, development, etc., and then the child of that realization uh, is born. Even for this, right? Saying, what to speak of the, the highest ever possible achievement, which is Krishna consciousness, the impossible of impossible things, where the infinite comes under the control of the finite. Sri Krishna Karshini Chasa. And Rupa Goswami is saying, what's the sequence in the science of devotion? Ado Shraddha, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anarta Nivriti, uh, Nishta, uh, Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhav, Prem, and then, you know, Pranay, what is it? Pranay, Rag, Anurag, Bhav, Mahabhav. The science of devotion given by the leader of our Sampradaya, Srila, he's saying those stages are there identifiably uh, for it to be considered real. And what did Guru Maharaj say to us? He said, and anyone who is a, a genuine Vaishnava, they will never think that they have achieved anartha nivritti. So before we get to, you know, nishta, ruchi, ashakti, he said, stop. A genuine Vaishnava will never think they are anartha nivritti. They are free 
of undesirable things, misconception, that, that they've somehow become qualified. Right? So, and to the heart of such a humble, aspiring servitor, does Krishna descend and reveal himself. And we want nothing less than that. We're interested in reality. We call it dive deep into reality. Right? Not into the wrong direction, with the wrong conception. Right? To gradually, under the guidance of Sadhu Shastra Guru and Vaishnav, to make progress, modest, natural growth and development in the right direction under the affectionate guidance of Sri Guru. Hare Krishna. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Pari Raja Kachar Jasa Terasa to Sri Srimad. Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Srila Bhakti Rakak Shvirar Dev Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai. Bhagavan Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai. And we thank him for composing Vaishnava K and the Prakrita Rasha Shatadushini. <laughs> and giving us all of our gurus and all of our books and, and letting us, and the glories of Bhaktivinoda Thakur, telling Prabhupada to take Krishna consciousness all over the world, and uh, anointing Guru as the Rupa all the all the graves of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Prabhupada.